fine, but it is very specific for recording the right <coughs> atrium or left anterior descending artery problems. Okay, so we don't really consider so far. If you see the books, you will not find the discussion of the AVR. You will find all others, but AVR is the least considered. But now it's an emerging concept that AVR is specific for some diagnoses, and these are for some problems of the coronary arteries on the right side, and for some drug toxicities like tricyclic <laughs> antidepressants and others. Anyway, AVR in our discussion is least concerned. So now you have approach from different areas and from different angles. V1, V2 is for septum. V3, V4 is for anterior. Okay. V5 and V6 for what about lead one? Here, this side. What about AVL? This side. What about the inferior surface of the heart? And what about the right atrial chamber view? AVR. AVR. Cannot use very much. Okay. Now, a patient comes with a cardiac pain, sweating, and semi-conscious conditions, and admitted to the emergency where ECG is taken because he has vomited twice and he is feeling shadid pains, crushing pain in this area. Plus, sweating is also there, the pulse is irregular. When the ECG was taken, it showed a diagnosis of an extensive left lateral infarction. Okay, it was a big left lateral infarction. What do you suspect which these would have shown the infarction in the ECG? Definitely four leads would have shown big changes. Other leads also may have some changes, but the best changes, abnormalities are seen in which four leads? And that will give you the diagnosis of what? Left sided infarction of the left ventricle. A person presents with inferior infarction, extensive inferior infarction. Now you can very well anticipate what leads will give you like this. Okay? Another person comes with a mild infarction in a little part of interventricular septum. Do you think all the leads of the heart will show the changes? No. Which leads will probably show lead one and lead two? So if I say septal infarction, your mind will definitely go to specific area. If I say no inferior infarction, you will jump on to some other area of the leads. And if I say left sided infarction, okay, sensitive infarction, you will understand. So that's why we use a particular system. Okay? Half of the leads are normal and half of the leads are showing abnormality. That will give you which area of the heart is involved. If you know the leads properly, you can tell. Shabab, is that clear so far? Okay. Leads are done. Okay. We are done with the leads. Now you see, very quickly, this is the system. When you see the ECG, look, 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. This is a complete modern strip of the ECG. Yani, this is the Dirti. So the first lead which is showing the result is from the left side if you are starting. Lead one. That? lead one. Below that you will have lead two. two. Then lead three. Then on the right side from top you have AVR, AVL, AVF. You have covered the limb leads. After that, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Then you will see oh like this. So you can identify infarction or abnormality in any of the leads. Okay? This is the picture. This is not the it's only the sketch right now. You will see the original ECG and you will see it's Maktu. 1, 2, 3, Maktu, AVR, AVL, AVF, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it means you understand, okay? Now, quickly see, what is it showing? V1, V2, okay? What is it showing? What is it showing? Great. What is it showing? Done, okay? Got the point. This is complete system, okay? And what is written in the socket of the or the <coughs> slot of the AVR? None. It is not none actually, okay? It does signify. Now we are approaching. But usually in the ECG, because right atrial infarctions are least likely, 
and less changes are seen, so we have not considered it very much. But even this ADR gives you changes. Okay. All right. This is the live strip, running strip which you see on the monitor in hospitals or in the wards or in the movies or pictures. You have seen it. ECGs running like that, isn't it? Yes. And you see different fluctuations are there. It's not a straight line. When a straight line comes, what does it mean? Yes. It's the death of the person, or death of the heart at least, or arrest of the heart, if not death. Okay? It's arrest of the heart. Okay. All right. Now please, we are approaching interpretation now. We have done the system, how to attach, how to record. Now we know the meanings of the leads, electrodes, wires, cables, everything is known. Isn't it? Now we are understanding what does the ECG result mean. When you see the result, how do you understand that? How do you interpret that? Okay? All right? Okay, let us have a Some part is familiar to you. Some is familiar. Look at, look at, I don't know if it's obstructing or not. Can you see this one? The below graph? Yes. Have you seen this kind of a graph before also? Yes. Where have you seen that? Action potential of the cardiac muscle. Okay? Ventricles? Classically ventricles. Also in atria? Also in atria. In the Purkinje system? No. no. Purkinje fibers? No. 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 Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Classically in the ventricles, also in the atrial muscles. The other graph of SA node and AV node is kind of different. Okay, that's a very special graph. This is also special because it has a plateau. Can you see the plateau? Yes. Okay. A suspended area over the top, taking the time and then descending like this. Okay. It's typically, characteristically known as the plateau. Whereas the other graph of SA node and AV node is different. Okay. It repeats like this. It goes like this. Okay. If you remember the shape of that, it's different. SA node like this. SA node and AV node graph will run like this, okay? And ventricles graph will run like this, or atria graph will run like this, okay? Now we are approaching <coughs> towards interpretation and definitions of the ECG. What do you see in ECG, okay? Do you see a straight line going? Yes. All right. Yes. After that, what do you see? It's a change. Okay. It's, it's a rise, which is a wave. Okay. Do you call it a wave? Yes. Sure. You call it a wave. It's a deflection. Wave is a deflection. Okay. Away from the normal straight line, horizontal line. If something is going up, you call it a wave. If something is going down, will you call it a wave also? Yes. yes. Why not? If something is going up and forming a wave. Will you call it a positive or a negative wave? Positive. And if it's going below the line and forming a wave? So now you are clear with the concept of positive and negative waves. Alright? Anything which is moving away or deflecting from the line is called the wave. Now you see, in a normal ECG strip, <coughs> how many ECG complexes there? How many waves do you see personally? How many waves do you see here? Four. 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 Identify and count. Four. How many? Four. Four? Four. 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 Look at it again. No problem. Okay, you might miss something. Four. Four. All of you Four. agree on five waves? Right? <coughs> what is the first wave which is coming up? P. P. Then? Q. 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 Then? R. After that? S. S. And G. It's the alphabetical order, T, U, R, S, T. But looking at from other angle, how many are positive and how many are negative? Just have a look. Three are the order. You are saying? Two are negative. Yes. Okay? All right. 
this line, straight line. <coughs> Do you see the pieces of straight line between the waves also? Some pieces of lines are mojood between the waves. One wave finishes and then there is a line and then another wave. Do you see some waves which are attached to each other also? Yes. So, QRS. you have different situations. QRS. QRS are attached to each other, isn't it? Yeah. They form a complex. If I say, where do you see complex in the ECD, what will you say? QRS. QRS is a complex. T wave is not a part of complex. T wave is not a part of complex. Alright? Five waves, three positive, two negative. Three waves are confluent. They are attached to each other as a complex. And two waves are separate waves. Okay? The first wave is and the last wave is okay. the straight piece of line which is not really showing you any striking electrical activity is called the isoelectric line okay this line from this line the wave starts is the wave starting from this line yes, yes. and the wave is finishing at this line also yes, all right. this wave is starting from isoelectric line and it's finishing here on this line our <coughs> wave is starting and finishing on this line, then you have the S wave starting and finishing on this line. Again, you have this isoelectric straight line, then you have the T wave. Do you see that? Yes. And again, after that, you have isoelectric line. After T, what do you have here? The next P wave. Okay. This is showing you a complete set of activity, electrical activity of the heart, starting from the P and finishing at T and again your journey will start from the P wave and the same sequence will be repeated again okay are you with us all of you backside specially okay any deflection in the ECG above or below the line is called the wave okay a straight piece of line, isoelectric line, between the waves, between two waves, is called a segment. What do you call it? Segment. segment. Okay? <laughs> now tell me, five waves you have identified. How many segments do you see in this ECG, Shabab? You two. tell me. Two. 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 Okay. And, 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 segments, okay? One segment is present. Three. From here, you are starting till here, isn't it? This is one segment. Yes. This small piece. Between which waves? D and, D and, D and, D and Q. Q. Okay? So you will call it PQ segment. Same name. Between P and Q wave. So you will call it PQ segment. Very interesting point. Sometimes when you record normal ECG, this Q wave is not module. Okay, it's not last time, it's not the way all the time that in every ECG, in every lead, you have the Q wave. Q wave is sometimes missing and you directly start with the R wave. So in the QRS complex, you may have three waves and sometimes you only have R and S wave. Q is not module. If Q is not module, which is often not seen, which is often not seen, then what will be the name of this segment if Q is not module? Okay, so now you have got two names of this segment. How well it is? If Q is module yes. and if Q is not there, PR. 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 the most famous name is PR segment. Okay, the most famous mature name is PR segment. All right. So don't get confused. PQ or PR same thing. If Q is module, you call it PQ. If not, you call it PR. In the same way, now look at the other segment and tell me the name. Now you tell me the name. Oh yes, one simple name. It is known as the S T segment. Okay. All right. Where can I find the third segment of the ECG? Between T and P. Yes. T P. Yes. T P. So you are starting from the T P T segment, and again here you expect you will have the T wave coming, like this T wave is coming. So this part of the segment, or this part of the segment, this is the TP segment. So, how many normal segments are there? Can you name them? PQ or PR? ST? TP. Okay. 
which one apparently is the wheel more elongated tp because there is a gap and then again the activity starts all right okay so this is showing you the complete electrical activity of the heart now let us focus and let us interpret what does each wave mean for that first of all you have to go back and you have to consider the journey of the cardiac impulse origin and spread of the cardiac impulse which you have done very quickly i want few answers from you what is the starting point of the cardiac impulse space maker which is and where is it located which chamber right atrium khalas okay then what happens where does the depolarization go AV node. To the AV node. Does it go directly to the AV node, or there is some connection? There is connection. Internodal pathways, sir. Okay, internodal pathways. Then AV node. Where is AV node present? Right atrium. Yeah, nay. S node, AV node, both are present in. So definitely, internodal pathways are also present in. Right atrium. So far, it's the story of the right atrium. After that, what happens? Divide to a okay. You have a small bundle which is penetrating. What do you call that bundle? At the junction, bundle of his, dividing into right and left branches. Okay. Right going into the right ventricle, right side, left, left side, and then they divide into fascicles and subfascicles and branches, and finally. Purkinje fibers, fine fibers, into the cardiac muscles. All right, this way. So the cardiac impulse is starting from the right atrium. It is passing through right atrium to the uh, AV junction and then entering on both sides to the ventricles, passing towards the apex and then turning back and going towards the posterior side, towards the base, and where these muscles are finally depolarized. Alas, the impulse dies. The next impulse again starts from the S node and takes the same. The third impulse and the same like this. So from the base to apex and again from apex to the base at the back side, it goes like this. This is your normal journey of the impulse. Okay. In this perspective, let us now interpret the electrical activity of the ECG. Okay. This is the electrical activity. I'm using the word electrical. I'm not using the word mechanical. Do you dif differentiate yes. mechanical and electrical? Yes. yes. Okay. So please don't make a blunder. Here, from here, this point, the S node activity is starting, and the atria electrical activity is starting. So, what is the meaning of the P wave? Structure. <coughs> P wave. What does it show? Attraction. What is happening in the atria? Attraction. You have made the blunder. I asked you not to make the blunder. ECG is not giving you the mechanical activity. Is contraction a mechanical activity or uh, an electrical activity? Yes. Don't use the word contraction here. No relaxation, no contraction. Please don't use this term. Okay. I said before also. Correct your approach from the beginning again now. Okay. Be careful. P wave. Electrical activity. What do you call this electrical activity which is spreading? Actually, Give me the word. Come on. Depolarization. depolarization is the word. Atrial depolarization. When the electrical act activity is spreading, sodium ions are going inside. A positive wave is formed. So the P wave, P wave is indicating. Please keep the mobiles inside. Okay. We agreed on that in the beginning. Nobody will keep the mobiles. Okay. So P wave means what? Depolarization. Okay. Atrial depolarization, not contraction. Please, ECG is not telling you the contraction. Don't interpret ECG. Don't describe ECG in terms of mechanical activity. Please, don't ever make a blunder like this. So it is atrial depolarization. After atria have depolarized, both the atria have depolarized and P wave is formed. Okay, there is a connection between the atria also. Alas, atria have <coughs> complete electrical activity. 
demobilization. After that, impulse is passing through some special area, still in the right atrium, not outside the right atrium, still in the right atrium, but through a special area where it has zehma actually, a lot of resistance to pass, very problematic area where it becomes very slow and takes time really. What is that area? AV nose. So it means, if I ask you in the ECG, which part is showing you atrial depolarization, what will be your answer? P wave. If I say, I want to see the AV nodal transmission, AV nodal transmission, what will you say? PR segment or the PQ segment, okay? So PQ segment is signifying or telling what? Yes, AV node. If there will be a problem in the AV node, it becomes bad and there is damage or obstruction, more time will be taken. What will happen to the PR segment or the PQ segment? It will become severe, okay? And that is a tashkhis of a disease. Normal, we know how much is the normal. If it is going more than normal, no, this is something abnormal. There is some obstruction coming, a block is coming, okay? So this is an area telling you about the block in the AV node. Okay? Normally it is showing you the AV nodal transmission. Okay? It is so difficult, it is so problematic that you cannot form a wave in there. An isoelectric line is seen when it is passing through the AV node. Straight line is there. Okay? So P wave, atrial depolarization. PR segment is giving you okay, AV nodal transmission. Now you have crossed the atria and you have entered into ventricles, both sides now from the AV one. Okay. This area is telling you the AV node and the end is telling you about the AV bundle also. From this point, Q, R, S, starting of the Q wave, now you are in the ventricles, Q, R, S, as a complex. Ventricles are big. Ventricles are very complicated. Ventricles are two chambers with thick walls. Ventricles have a special arrangement of the muscles in the form of eight like this. Okay, a very special anatomical arrangement. So impulse has a very twisted pathway when it is passing. Yani one wave cannot cover all the ventricles. So how many waves are formed when the impulse is passing through? Three, Three waves. The first wave is? Second wave is R. and third wave is S. First the impulse is passing through the septum. Okay. So which wave should describe the septum activity? Q wave usually describes the septum activity. And then it is passing through the major muscles. So which wave is describing the major muscles? R, R wave. And last part of the muscles of the ventricles, especially at the back side? S wave. So Q wave, R wave, S wave, all for the ventricles. They are all three for the ventricles. The first wave, a small wave, mungkin it is majud sometimes and at other times it is not seen. I told you Q wave is not always present. Okay? But if it is there, it is showing you, telling you what? Septal depolarization. Then general mass of ventricular depolarization, R, R wave. Then the last areas or the last parts of the ventricles, S, 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 S. Okay? Now you understand what is the meaning of the QRS interpretation, depolarization. Okay. After that, again there is a silent line. Do you see the silent line here? Okay. What is that line? S segment. After that, you have T wave. Shabab, T wave is QRS is telling you ventricular depolarization. T wave is telling you Vapor. ventricular repolarization. The question is, what is there? What is the mystery between the ventricular depolarization and repolarization in a straight line? You wonder where is the impulse? What is the impulse doing and where is it passing when you are trying to understand this line? Yes. Match this line with this area of the action potential. Look at this line. This is the action potential graph. What is it showing? Take it as a ventricle. Okay, I'm talking about the ventricle. What is this line? Depolarization. Okay, so depolarization is shown by this area. 
What is this plateau telling you? Plateau is coinciding with ST segment. And after plateau, repolarization from here, from this part to this part. Okay? Which wave is formed? So repolarization is coincident with T wave. QRS complex with the ventricular depolarization. And in between these two, what do you have? The plateau. Plateau is the time of suspension, time is taken. Okay? Where you are not really having depolarization is finished. And repolarization has become very slow. It's a very slow and suspended. It's kind of more luck as you see. It's, it's for a long time you remain suspended and then the graph falls down, isn't it? So this is plateau. So plateau is telling you about the ST segment. Alright? After that, T wave is finished and then you have completed the journey of the impulse. The next impulse will arise from here, from this part, and the next P wave will start. Okay? So this period is isoelectric silence. There is no <coughs> significant activity in the heart. Just waiting for the next impulse to start. Alright? One question should come in your mind when we are discussing these atria and ventricular activity. Okay, what is that question which is still unanswered? No, look at this, look at this P Q R S T and see what what do you see something as missing which is really not satisfying with Very nice Turkey. Okay, Turkey picked that. He said that you talked about atrial depolarization. You jumped to ventricular depolarization. You talked about, did you forget about the atrial depolarization? Or did you deliberately leave that? Or do you, you don't want to discuss that? What is the answer? You don't see any change for the atrial depolarization. Do you see here? No. La, we did not discuss. Shabab, actually, this is atrial depolarization. This is the AV nodal transmission. Okay. After that, here we have there would have been a wave of atrial depolarization in this area. In this area. Do you see this area? But what do you see in this area? What do you see here? What is this? QRS complex. Yes, Shabab. QRS complex is such a strong and powerful complex that if this is a weak person and I am a very muscular strong person, if I stand in front of him like this and he is a little person, will you see him or will you see me? Okay, from the back side, you will not see him. So, his shadow is obscured. Okay, it is covered by a big QRS complex. So, what is the place of the atrial depolarization? Just at the back side of the QRS complex. But you will never see in a normal ECG the atrial depolarization because it is covered by, it is suppressed by, it is overshadowed by QRS complex. So this is the place somewhere, but blah, you don't see that. Okay? So now you have the answer. It is module, it is there, it is a phenomenon happening, but you don't see it. It's covered by it. And that's why you don't see that. Alright? Okay. Now, are you comfortable with all the waves and their meanings? Are you aware of the segments and their meaning also? Yes. Yes, you. Yes. S wave. S wave is the last wave of the ventricular depolarization in which the last area, especially going from apex to the base, base as a back side, okay, when there is a depolarization spread, then we have this S wave forming. Okay? So Q, R, and S together they are representing the boundaries. Please now. Yes, please. Uh, R is S for what? R is, R is for the major walls of the ventricles, both ventricles. Okay? Major bulk, major walls of both ventricles, they are shown by the R. Okay? And then S we have the remaining last part of the ventricular depolarization. Alright. Please. One more thing. 
Now we are making some combinations, please. It's very important. You know the meaning of wave, you know the meaning of segment. 